There's the second slide. And the third one, which also includes three light curves, which are actual light curves from three of this year's deep sky objects. So let's go back to our sequence representing the evolutionary stages of a massive star. Now, the numbered ones are from the basic stellar evolution card set, but the lettered ones are from the deep sky object ones that I just showed you. Okay. So now we're going to start integrating into the sequence the deep sky objects for 2018. So we start with D, number 2, number 19, M, B, and O or 4. So now you see what we've done is that we have added D, which is a star formation region for 2018 to be that, you, that the students need to know about. We have M, which is uh, Alpha Ori, or Betelgeuse for those of you, for the common name, but that's Alpha Ori. And then we have, and that is a massive red supergiant. And then we have W49b, which is a type 2 supernova remnant, and O or 4, O being Chandra image of Jamenga. Okay, so you're starting to see that now this gives you an understanding that when you're, when you're learning about these deep sky objects, what you have to keep in mind always is their stage of stellar evolution, where they evolved from, what the progenitor stars were, uh, where, where they're going to end up next on the HR diagram or when they get destructed. So, and, and there are different, many different sequences for the same thing. For instance, here's the one we just did. Now we're going to put together another massive star sequence, this time using two 19 A, C, H, and I. So, we have H, which is a star formation complex. Again, we have two. Again, we have the um, massive stars in the Pleiades. And then we have AG Carr, and we have IC443, and we have a pulsar. Now, we only have two numbered ones from the basic card set. Everything else now is from those deep sky objects, and we could use this year's deep sky objects to put together almost everything. Any stage that's missing, you can you can gleam out of the Stellar Evolution basic card set. But here we have our star formation uh, region. We have AG Carr, which is a luminous blue variable, a hypermassive star, and a type 2 supernova, a very interesting one, by the way. And we have the pulsar that's in M82X2. Now, again, these are basic of see, your students as they progress more and more and more, they can actually put together the actual pulsar that comes from the actual type 2 that comes from. They can get more and more technical, more and more in-depth, as in-depth as they want to, and the more they play around with these images and sequencing and saying, well, I could put this one here, but this one fits better because then the more they're going to learn and more they're going to understand the process. So now we remember we also are interested in the HR diagram because as we know as these stars transition they're going to go through some of these instability strips and then end up producing a light curve that's unique to that particular stellar evolutionary stage. So now we are going to add some of those things too. And don't forget, we also have three different represented here, specific light curves that are going to be produced by some of these more massive stars. So we're going to work those into the sequence now. So here we go. We're going to represent the stages of evolution of a massive star. And now, as you see, we have um, some very high-end numbers from the basic stellar evolution cards that we have not used before, plus some letters from the deep sky objects for 2018. So we have D, 
star formation. It's the only star formation complex image there. The, we have the protoplanetary system. We have the Pleiades, massive hot stars. And then we have an image from the HR diagram because this particular one shows a star transitioning off the main sequence. It is run out of core hydrogen. It's now furiously, because it is so massive, furiously fusing heavier and heavier elements on its way to catastrophic collapse. Some of these stars are so massive that they pretty much used up all of their high core hydrogen before they, you even realize they'd hit the main sequence. Um, they're far and few between to actually find it and observe one because, as I say, they live such a short, astronomically speaking, lifetime uh, that to catch one of these is only like five or six hypermassive stars that have been uh, observed to date. Lucky to have gotten those, I'm sure. It's a big universe out there. So this one shows a massive star transitioning off the upper end, the really hot massive star end of the uh, main sequence in the HR diagram. Uh, this is an image of, again, Alpha Ori, which is a red supergiant well on its way towards its final demise. And this actually is light curve produced by Alpha Ori. Um, that is a recent one. Um, and as you can see, it, this is actually in the, insta it's in the instability strip where the semi-regular variable stars are. And you can see it's sort of a little bit of structure, a little bit of sort of periodic to it, sort of a little bit of regular. But, it, but it's also got other parts in it that aren't so regular. So it is a semi-regular variable star as well as a red supergiant. And this is a type 2 supernova event. And again, we have um, the pulse, a pulsar, and this is a light curve produced by pulsar. It looks very, very different from the other light curves that you've seen. This one is counts per second because pulsars are, are millisecond pulsars. They're really rotating re really, really rapidly, um, milliseconds. So it is always count for time with those sharp little peaks. So star formation, protostar, massive star, moving off the main sequence, becoming a red supergiant, producing that instability as, as it runs out of one fusion product, product and starts fusing into the next heavier atomic nuclei as it goes through that, that process. And, and it's in that region where that's taking place and producing that specific kind of light curve. And then it will eventually collapse into a supernova and it might produce, it will either produce, it'll produce some flavor of a neutron star, um, a pulsar or a magnetar. And if it is a pulsar, then it will produce that very unique uh, rotation light curve. So as you can see now, as you work more and more of the images in, more and more of the light curves in, as you go along with these sequences, the more you can understand how it all fits together into the same process. So when you go back to the um, Chandra website, to the education menu, and you scroll down to Stellar Evolution, um, there is, for instance, um, underneath the Stellar Evolution materials that we've already talked about, and we, as I said, there will be webinars posted with the Stellar Evolution materials. We're still in the process of getting those together. Uh, underneath that, it says stars. It says variable stars, and it says pulsating, plotting pulsating variable stars on the HR diagram. Uh, there will be a webinar for that also before too long, as soon as I can work that one into the schedule. Um, but what I'm going to do is eliminate the star category, take pulsing, plotting the pulsating variable star materials, and post those under stellar evolution because that's where they belong. And I'm going to unlink the variable star material because that needs a complete and total overhaul before that goes back up. And not necessary uh, any time you need. You want to have any particular information about variable stars. Um, it, there is a large section in the Astronomy Coaches Manual available that I wrote for the Science Olympiad uh, bookstore and you can read 
all more than you wanted to know about variable stars in that coach's manual. So the plotting variable star one is interesting. It is, I mean, here we have the, again, our graphic, and here is the HR diagram uh, for that students use as a worksheet to plot pulsating variable stars on the HR diagram. Now, this, some of the stars are massive stars, some of them are not so massive stars, so we have different kinds of variability in this particular investigation, but it still gives students a really good sense of what's going on in those instability regions on the HR diagram. This is the worksheet they will use if you use the one where I've already plotted some of the nearby and some of the closest stars. If, if there are some of you who have used the only HR diagram activity that's ever been put together, which is older than I am, I think, really old, the, it has you plot the brightest stars and the closest stars. This will not look like that one because this one is some nearby stars and some bright stars because in order to have a consistency in the measurement of the spectral classification of the objects plotted on this particular HI diagram, I only used stars that were observed by the Hipparchos mission. Okay, the Hipparchos mission. So this will look different than the one that is out there, has been out there forever. It will look different. If you want to, you can have the students start from scratch because I also have a version of it where they plot some of the closest and some of the nearest and they construct their own background branches on the HR diagram. Um, and actually this is pretty good. I also have one where they have to calculate the um, absolute magnitude by uh, using the parallax method. This is good because this makes them use the distance modulus, which is the one equal, the most, quote, difficult, unquote, relationship of apparent magnitude, absolute magnitude, and distance that we use all the time. Every year it's on the event as, as, as a possibility that they're going to have to use that uh, relationship, the distance modulus, so they can get a lot of practice if they have to calculate the absolute magnitude because they have to calculate both maximum and minimum. If you're going to plot a variable star on the HR diagram, it's not just one point. You have to plot it at maximum and plot it at minimum in order to get a really good understanding of how erratic the behavior can be for, in some of these instability regions. So uh, here is the, quote, answer key for this particular investigation. And as you can see, there um, are semi, there's the, a semi-regular one, there are Myras, there are, there are Cepheids, and there are, are Lyrae that are plotted on this. And some of these variable, variability of some of these stars, as you can see, the one over the extreme right is a Myra uh, variable star. It can, tra it can transition to spectral classifications. They change so much in, in diameter and brightness as they puff back and forth. So, and then the, what, once they've plotted them and they see where they're located on the, on the HR diagram, then they determine what type of variable star that is and fill in the blank. And if I get brave, um, I would like to put together one of these for massive stars and see how well that goes. So if you are interested in actually acquiring a set of the stellar cycle, images, an actual card set. We still have a few of the Earth Scientist magazines. I do not think we have too many left, maybe a couple of hundred or so. Um, but if you request from one from the Chandra X-ray Observatory website, it, it comes with that card set in it. So you will have one of those card sets because it's inside the issue. Now this issue is completely and totally Chandra materials. Uh, the, the ice core record is in there, the plotting variable star activity is in there, along with the card set inserted in the magazine. And also two of 
the um, DS9 image analysis kinds of, the introductory one, um, and also the investigating supernova remnants one, and I, you can download any one of those individually if you do not want to request the magazine and you're going to download your own card set, then you can just download the article that you want from the Chandra website. And I mentioned DS9 because we are in this process of um, where we are actually going to be able to use DS9 but in a different format. I know some of you have heard rumors that this is coming. It is coming. Uh, they are, are reformatting it so that it is going to be browser-based, embedded HTML pages, and you will be able to do image analysis on your cell phone or any mobile device. So um, for 2018, we're just going to use a screenshot from JS9, but trust me, next year we will be using JS9. There will be a question where you actually have to access JS9 and use it. Um, we're all prepared for if the internet isn't working that day with screenshots, but hopefully you will be actively accessing the same software tools that the scientists use to analyze their x-ray data. So um, that is under the imaging section. Um, there will be a JS9. Those will always stay up there because there's, there are pencil and paper versions of these um, that you can download and work on too. So these will always stay there if you want to use a pencil and paper version or if you want to actually use the go to the virtual observatory, but we are hoping to go totally for our purposes, JS9. So if there is anything that you want to know that you have not, that I have not told you about stellar evolution and how best to prepare, send me an email. Uh, it's here in, in the PowerPoint. That you can you know where to go on the Chandra website. This webinar will be posted on the Chandra website and the PowerPoint that supports it with a link on every slide to exactly where to go will be posted on the National Science Olympiad website with a link to the webinar and the Stellar Evolution materials. So if there's anything you can't find, can't figure out how to order, anything you'd like to know, please do not hesitate to let me know. Thank you.